Okay, so this is the moment you've all been waiting for. But before I get started on any of this insanity that some of you think this all is, let me just say that one of the biggest questions I get from homesteaders is, and it's really hot in here if you can't tell. I'm sweating like a dog. Um, it's like 100 degrees outside today. We are definitely going to the creek. <laughs> one of the biggest questions I get from homesteaders, Zach, how do I make money with my homestead? How am I supposed to get a homestead and then work away from my homestead? That means I can't get anything done on my homestead. How can I earn money? How can I earn a living? Understand, number one, first thing, is that homesteaders and people who have lived in this sort of manner off, the, off their land have always done so with multiple revenue streams during different seasons of the year. Okay, Get out of your mind this whole idea of a career. That's number one. Um, that's something that's modern, that we've invented modern since people have lived in the cities. You have a career, this is your job, you go to your job, you come home and, and you do that till you die. Farmers, ranchers, people who have homesteaded, they have always had multiple revenue streams per season during the seasons. The second thing I'm going to point out here is the reason I'm bringing this to you is the fact that so many people ask about how to earn money. And there's a, a YouTube channel called My Shire Farms. And this YouTube channel sells about 80,000 quail eggs per year. They are a homesteader. He's a small business owner, fantastic YouTube channel, and he devotes this YouTube channel to helping others. He wants other people to get into the business. He's not worried about people taking his, his share. You know, there's plenty of demand for this. He can't even keep up with it. He said that one person out west on the west coast charges 80 cents per balut egg. He charges around 50 cents per egg, depending. Yeah, there's someone who's in a different area, they charge around 25 cents. It just depends on your area what people will pay. But he says one of the ways he got customers was just going to Asian markets or Asian uh, nail salons or Vietnamese you know, grocery stores or things like that where he say, hey, I have Balut. And these people want Balut. I'm giving you an opportunity on the homestead to earn some money. I'm not set up for this because he has a giant operation, takes a lot of electricity, and we're solar here, so it's not something we would be feasibly getting into. Um, however, for you, this may be right up here. I'm giving you an example of a way a guy earns money, and he's willing to help you. Okay, so take it for You don't have to eat them. You don't have to like them. But I'm giving you an opportunity to earn some money from your homestead. You know, a way to legitimately work and earn a living. And here's a man who's ready to help you. Now, all that to say, <laughs> this is something, listen, millions of people eat this every day, okay? In, in that part of the world. This is like their hot dogs and hamburgers. Now, imagine if you were living somewhere over there and you could never get a hot dog or a hamburger where you live. You couldn't, anything ever, ever recognizable American food just wasn't on the menu. And someone comes along and says, hey, I know a way I can get you some hot dogs or some hamburgers. How would you like that? Sign me up. Give me some hot dogs and hamburgers. <laughs> right? So there you go. There's the demand just in reverse. You're coming, to, you're coming to someone who is used to having this vendor street food. Normally it's ducks. But the, the, the high end, the really, on, the really in demand is the quail. Okay, and it's hard to even over there get quail. You know, you can get it, but it's even then it's not, not as easy. Mostly it's duck, duck eggs. And these are in vendors. Usually the vendors, from what I understand, from, from what I've read, the vendors usually come out at night. It's the street food and people will come out and they will buy balut duck, duck if they can get if, you know, if quail if they can get it. But duck usually. But quail is the one that's in the highest demand. And these things are easy to raise. So. All that said, if you want to tune out, now's the time to tune out. It's not going to be that. Come on. Pull up your big boy pants. <laughs> What's wrong with you? And for those of you out there who left comments in the last video saying, well, Zach, I don't know if this is biblically correct. I don't think you can eat this. Deuteronomy 22, verse 6 and 7 is very clear that if you come upon a nest full of eggs, you can take either the nest or the bird, but you can't take both. So that you're, you know, things may go well with you in life. You know, <laughs> do unto others as you. It's, it, you don't take the seed. You always leave seed behind. Or, or the ability to make seed. So you can take the eggs. You can take the bird. But you can't take both. But you can take the eggs. 
<laughs> and it's in the context of food. Okay, you'd have to be a complete moron to not see Deuteronomy 22, verse 6 and 7 as being in the context of food. And being that you can take the eggs in the context of food, you don't know if those eggs were laid 10 minutes ago or if they were laid 10, you know, 10 days ago. So you're taking balut. You're taking balut. Now, so calm down, everybody out there. Just calm down. <laughs> Some of you guys get really worked up. It just drives me a little crazy. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, I boiled these for about 10 minutes. And then I let them sit in hot water for a while, for about another 10 minutes. Um, and so I think they're done. So this is what we're going to do, okay? I'm just going to crack it open. Be basically like that, okay? And then, the, yeah, there's definitely juice, just like in the videos I've seen. Just like in the videos I've seen, okay. You got a little bit of shell in there. Okay, I'm just going to drink it. Nothing came out. I can see the juice, though. Maybe I have to... Oh, okay, here we go. There's a membrane. Still nothing. <laughs> Things aren't going really well. I'm just going to uh, open this up here. Okay. It's very interesting. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm just going to squeeze this into my mouth like I've seen people on video do. Put a little bit of salt in there. Everything's better with salt, right? This is Redmond's Real Salt, by the way. We're going to be an affiliate of them soon, working out, working out those details. Down the hatch. It's good. It's good. It tastes like chicken. It tastes like chicken. Tastes like chicken. All right. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to try it with the hot sauce. <clears throat> so you just pop pop the top. You do the narrow uh, the narrow top. Oh, no, no, sorry. The, the wider top first. Because that's where you part you can peel. And you just peel it off. Oh, it looks like egg yolk. Okay. Just peel it off. Get enough to where you can just squeeze it into your mouth. And this is how people eat it. This is how they do it. Come on, people. Let's learn a little bit of culture. Don't you? <laughs> you Americans never go anywhere. I did live overseas um, for um, a little bit when I was in the military. Got to travel to Greece. Got to travel to the Czech Republic. Got to see Macedonia. I spent my 21st birthday on the Serbian border. On the border of Serbia. Spending it, I spent the night in a tower armed with a tow missile launcher. Okay, um, so I've seen stuff. I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. Okay, and Jamie, my late wife, she grew up in Papua New Guinea. So, and she spent a lot of time in Southeast Asia. Her favorite food was Thai food. So, I, if she were here today, she would definitely try these. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. It's not really coming out as easy as the other one did. I'm just going to peel it all the way. See, it's like an egg. It's like a hard-boiled egg. It's like a hard-boiled egg. Okay. Um, oh, I forgot to open this first. Hold on, let me set this down on the napkin. Cholula, the chili garlic version. All right. Okay, here we go. It tastes like chicken. It tastes more like a hard-boiled egg. I'm going to try one more. All right. I know I'm driving you. Listen, if you've tuned out, you've tuned out already. If you're sticking with me, God love you. But the ones who are going to tune out have all are already long tuned out. <clears throat> this one looks like another hard-boiled. doesn't look like the balut. I wonder if, let me, let me Google, let me, here, hold on. Let me try this. Let me try this one. There we go. This one looks like the first one. It one looks like hard, more hard boiled. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to use the Cholula. I like that Cholula and salt this time. Oh, yeah, so that's ready to go. Okay. All right, salt. 
<clears throat> hey, listen, there's one thing you can say about this channel. You get stuff from this channel, you don't get from any other channel on YouTube. I get any other homesteading channel on YouTube. You just don't get it. No. Okay, here we go. Tastes like chicken. I don't see what the big deal is. Mm. There is a spot in there that's more harder that I think is at the, the narrow part of the egg. They, they call it, I think, the stone. And I actually like the texture of that. It's more of a hard, rubbery, but very satisfying to, um, to bite into. If you need to get my drift. I could, if I listen, if I lived on a homestead where some of you guys live, and I had the ability to put in a warehouse, small warehouse, small building, and I had the electricity that I don't have here, I would definitely do this for a living. And um, I think they're fantastic. I, I don't think they're bad at all. They don't, it tastes like chicken. It tastes like chicken. It, it tastes between, between a chicken and an egg, a hard boiled egg. That's what it tastes like. And it tastes like chicken soup. So, I mean, if you have chicken noodle soup, if you like chicken noodle soup, it's just like the hard, imagine chicken noodle soup with chicken, a chicken wing and hard boiled egg all mixed into one. That's what it tastes like. It's disgusting to you because you're not used to it. You didn't grow up with this, but millions of people eat this every day. Um, I remember a while back, I put up a video talking about a giraffe. I would totally eat a giraffe. All these hunters who go over to Africa and they kill a giraffe, they never take the meat home. They give it to all the villagers. So it's like they're doing the villagers a favor. A hunter goes over to Africa, spend te spends tens of thousands of dollars for the ability to hunt a giraffe. And it's an older giraffe. It's not like it's one in its prime or a young giraffe or anything. No, they killed the old bulls. And then they give all the meat to the villagers around. And they paid to do it. <laughs> I don't see what the big deal is. I would totally eat a giraffe, though. I would, I would totally eat it. People are like, oh, I can't. They're so cute. How can you eat that? You're just not used to what you're not used to. That's all it is. Listen, here's my point in all this. Here's my point in doing this. I'm trying to help you out, guys. I'm trying to help you out. I want you to find a way to earn a sustainable living, to make an income with your homestead. This was just, I've talked about many things over the years. This is just one that I have never heard of until recently. I'm like, we should do a video on this. I should try. I have the ability. Tim has an incubator. I have the ability. Tim has the ability to make balut. Why not try it and do it for you on video? <laughs> All right. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Uh, would you try it? I think I really don't think it's that bad. I really think it was pretty good. Um, there's people I've seen on YouTube who've tried it and they're like, oh, absolutely not. It's not bad. It's not bad. You just got to, you know, get past what it is in your mind, what is acceptable of food and what is not. So, all right, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And, and keep it centered more on understanding this isn't a video just to gross you out or to give you something that you're not used to and, and, and for the shock factor and clickbait. YouTube won't promote my videos anyway. I hardly ever get any views for stuff. Unless I talk about end of the world stuff. Those usually get a little more views. But anyway, my point being is that we're trying to figure out a way to make your homestead sustainable. If you have a found a way that you might be able to share, like my Shire Farms has done, that you can help people earn a living on their homesteads. I have heard, I have gotten some heart wrenching emails in the past of people who have said, Zach, it, it really breaks my heart that my husband has to leave every day to go to work and he can't get done the things he wants to get done on the homestead because we have to continue to have a job in order to pay the bills. Do you think you could sell 80,000 balut a year and pay the bills? This guy's doing it. Again, check out myshirefarms. myshirefarms. I think it's .com. He has his own website and he has his own YouTube channel. And a lot of his YouTube channels are completely geared to helping you. Leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. All right, guys. See you next time at the Homestead. Bye. Hello, everybody. I'm Dean Kane, And I am a big fan of American Homestead. As are you, or you wouldn't be seeing this right now. I'm in my backyard, my homestead, where I grow lots of fruit and vegetables. Look, both Zach and I are big fans of history, and we are watching the economic situation in our country just like you are. We absolutely love this country, and it's very difficult for us to watch it struggle financially. Now, did you know that the Constitution of the United States, in Article 1, Section 10, 
only allows for legal currency to be minted in gold and silver? I bet you didn't. I wasn't aware. But our founders, in their wisdom, they understood that this was the true way to build a solid financial foundation for this new nation. And they were right. They were dead right. These principles rocketed the industry and the economy that made the United States the powerhouse that we now enjoy. However, today, the U.S. dollar, it's not backed up by anything of real value. And here we are. Now, our friends at Genesis Gold Group are helping people stuck in 401ks, IRAs, and anyone else who's watching their hard-earned wealth teeter on the edge of oblivion by moving their money out of risky paper-denominated assets and into physical precious metals like gold and silver. You can touch it. I'm doing it myself. So is my sister. Call Genesis Gold Group today and let them help you develop a plan to safeguard your assets. It's simple. You can call the number on the screen or visit them at genesisgoldgroup.com. And I will see you next time on the homestead with my dogs and all the fruit that I grow. Look at all this good stuff. You know, we got nectarines, huh? more dogs coming down. Uh, if you get cut, we got some olive oil for, for you. What I, what I do need though is chickens. I need chickens because eggs are about the same price as gold right now. Anyway, see you on the homestead.